What do Christian science believe? This is people of the free gift where we ground believers in their identity in Christ and equip them to reach those caught in religion. And we're so glad that you joined us. And I want to remind you, if you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button anytime during this video and click those notifications in order to be notified whenever we release the video. We release content regarding the cults and how to reach them with the gospel at least once a week. And we release a lot of other great content as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And today I'm going to be talking through from my book, Sharing Jesus with the Cults, available on Amazon as paperback and Kindle, as well as other places where books are sold. And so I'm going to be covering this, the chapter in that book dealing with what does Christian science believe or what exactly is Christian science. So first of all, what do they believe? Well, let's go ahead and dive in. There is no life, truth, intelligence, or substance in matter. All is infinite mind in its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is mortal truth. Matter is mortal air. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Many people confuse Christian science with Scientology and faith healing, and they get confused with New Age practices and also Eastern religions. They present themselves as a restoration of primitive Christianity as a demonstrable scientific system. And they have a number of different... Uh, uh, publications that they put out, the Christian Science Monitor, Christian Science Journal, Christian Science Sentinel, well, you get the gist. And the main uh, scripture that they would follow is Mary Baker Eddy's Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. And that Key to the Scriptures is actually kind of a, a redefining of very common terms. And I cover those in my terminology section of the chapter, and I'm just going to go ahead and flip over there to give you an idea. The words like angels, atonement, baptism, Eucharist, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, body, Christ, creation, devil, evil spirits, flesh, God, gods, healing, heaven, hell, Holy Spirit, Jesus stripes, knowledge, mortal mind, pastor, personhood, prayer, resurrection, salvation, sickness, sin, soul, spirit, and wrath, all have very, very different meanings in Christian science. And that's what makes it very uh, difficult for the average Christian to have a conversation with them because they'll ask them simple questions about Jesus and about salvation and about the Bible. And a lot of times the answer given by a Christian science will either make them believe that they are Christian just like you and me or it'll confuse the pants off of you to such an extent that you won't even know what question it was that you asked in the first place. This is the, the key, when she says key to the scriptures, all of those different terminologies. And by the way, you can access their website and find um, the entire text of Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, as well as many of her other works on their website. And so that's a great resource if you're looking for more information. But she wanted them to take those new terms, those new definitions, and we talked about how that is a key instrumental piece in forming a cult and making the group dependent upon you as the cult leader. And she successfully did that by redefining all those terms because then you have to read the scripture through those lenses. And if you read the scripture through those lenses, it makes absolutely no sense. It sounds, sounds like utter gibberish. And so then you're left just with Mary Baker Eddy's work. And so the cycle of dependency and control has come full circle. And uh, so uh, it's neither Christian or science. And so some people, uh, some Christians actually don't even like the fact that they 
get this term, like Christian scientist. And I'm sure there's a lot of Christians who happen to be scientists who find that term really offensive. In fact, I remember I was talking about one of them and I was trying to give uh, information that they had shared and I described them as a Christian scientist and I, a lot of like hands went in the air like, wait, what, what are you talking about? I didn't know they were a Christian scientist. And um, so it causes a lot of confusion on that end as well. And uh, so let's just jump into what they believe about Jesus because that really gets to the core of the issue. Christian science does not teach Jesus as God. They don't teach Jesus died on a cross, nor do they teach his blood atones for our sins. They don't teach Jesus rose from the dead bodily. They don't teach salvation as we see it. They have a different view of salvation. They don't teach Jesus' bodily ascension. They don't teach Jesus is going to return someday. They don't teach the Trinity. They don't teach hell or sin. Christian science teaches sin, evil, the devil, death, and disease or illusions. They don't teach suffering is real. They don't teach God created a material universe. They teach this entire universe is an illusion. They don't teach the virgin birth as the Bible sets forth. They do, do have a virgin birth, but it's so different than what the Bible talks about. They teach Jesus was a fallible man. Demons are bad thoughts. They do not teach the word of God is fallible, so it's not, like, not divinely inspired. It's full of of corruptions, but they also teach science and health with key to the scriptures inspired and without error. Sounds like the LDS article of faith. We believe the Bible to be the word of God as far as it's translated correctly, and we also believe the Book of Mormon to be the word of God. Okay, you could almost substitute in science and health with key to the scriptures into that, and you would have Christian science's view of the Bible and Mary Baker Eddy's works as well. They view Mary Baker Eddy as a prophet, and their scriptures are now above the Bible. And so what do they do when they worship together? Um, well, they don't view a prayer the way that we do. Uh, they view prayer. Um, they aren't asking God for help. They teach prayers communicating with the person. They do not teach prayers communicating with the personal God. They don't use doctors, or at least not as often as we do. And they prefer to use Christian science practitioners for healing. Um, going to the doctor is frowned upon. It's not official doctrine or anything like that, but, you know, like, who who really goes to doctors these days? If you have faith, you can just, you know, go and do whatever it is that you need to do, um, and then um, that'll, that'll take care of things for you. And so, uh, they don't follow the... Okay, they don't follow typical customs of Christianity, and their church services are divided. You might have seen they have Christian science reading rooms. Or they don't have really like church buildings. They have reading rooms. And so you go in there, and they have services at a specific time. But really, the time is kind of divided between just reading the Bible, and then um, uh, you're basically reading or hearing uh, Mary Baker Eddy's works. So, you know, the Bible is not explained at all. It's just you kind of jump right into Mary Baker Eddy's work, and, you know, she does the explaining for you, really. Um, and so let's talk about Mary Baker Eddy for a little bit. Um, she started Christian Science, and it started with some illnesses that she experienced in her life. She had a spinal weakness, and this caused seizures, and she also has some other health problems as well. These health problems influenced her as time goes on to come up with the doctrine and form the first Church of Christian Sciences. As an adult, Mary became involved with various forms of the occult, including spiritism. She sometimes fell into a deep trance where sometimes people would ask her for advice on various matters. She claimed she experienced various encounters during the night, including strange rapping sounds and seeing dead people by her bedside. She sometimes received messages messages from the dead. And so, again, you have this tie into the occult that we saw with Scientology, we saw with Mormonism, we saw really with Jehovah's Witnesses, we, all of these groups have some kind of tie to the occult as well. And so Phineas Quimby is another major influence in Mary Baker Eddy's life. He uh, taught what is called like met the metaphysical movement in which he believed that um, basically we have the, the power with our thoughts and with our words to be able to speak things into existence and determine our health because really this is all an illusion 
And so many people believe that Murray Baker Eddy just kind of like stole a huge portion of his writings and they kind of became the key foundational stone, throwing in uh, some religion and Christianity and Bible language type stuff. And that became Science and Health with Key of the Scriptures. The other movement, by the way, uh, the other person that was influenced by Quimby's work was E.W. Kenyon, who was instrumental in the Word of Faith movement. So I'm just gonna throw that one out there for free. And you can kind of see how this idea that the law of attraction and you know, name it and claim it and, you know, but really what you have here with Christian science is they are like renewed Gnosticism, just like uh, we saw with the Jehovah's Witnesses that they are the renewed followers of Arius, who was rejected at the Council of Nicaea. I have a lot of other videos about that. Um, but this is Gnosticism. Gnosticism was an early you know, worldview. It actually pre-existed Christianity. Um, but then it's kind of started swallowing up Christianity um, in the towards the end of the first century. And so you have hints against it in uh, the New Testament, in Colossians, and uh, some books like that, First John, for example. And what Gnosticism taught was that uh, all spirit was good, matter was evil. Okay, and so it, cr it created this huge dualism between the two worlds. Okay, so you don't have, you can't have a physical God who physically created the, the heavens and the earth. Um, and you can't have like a real, like matter is not real. It's just an illusion. And you can't have God becoming a man. You can't have God dying on a cross, which does dying at all. You can't have God physically, bodily rising again from the dead. And you can't have, you know, God, you know, ascending into heaven in a human body. You can't have him descending back in a human body as well. And so all of those doctrines are rejected, like I said. Um, and so really, that's not, that's not Christianity at all. We've talked about the, the core essential doctrines of Christianity, those, you know, being that there's one God and that Jesus is God and human. And so they would reject that. They would reject that he died for our sins and rose again from the dead. So they reject the gospel. They reject that he physically and bodily rose again from the dead. So they reject that as well. Um, so there's no sense in which you can say the Christian science is Christian, and you also couldn't say that it's science because there's been no verifications of any kind, kind of like we talked about with Scientology, how they've had to uh, make their e-meters, uh, they've had to call them religious artifacts because uh, they got after them because they were rejected, uh, they were pushing them as scientific instruments, that would actually be able to diagnose real things, and um, they got out after them for that. So, some other influences. She hated Calvinism. She grew up in a Calvinistic home. The idea that there was a God who was choosing who was going to go to heaven and hell. And you know, just so you know, if you're watching this, not all Christians believe that um, we we believe that God chose. We believe that we also have a choice. Um, and that he uh, wants all people to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so if that's a problem for you, know that that doesn't represent every Christian. That re represents certain Christians who do believe that. But um, she definitely rejected Calvinism. Um, that seemed to be a common thread, honestly, with you know Joseph Smith, with Charles Stays Russell, with all of these guys. They really disliked the the doctrines of double predestination and the concepts of hell and um, the, the concepts of God that were really being pushed at the time. And so that, that was a huge problem for them. So another influence was Anne Lee, who taught that it's called Father Mother God, both believed that the divine was both masculine and feminine. And so Christian scientists often refer to God as Father Mother. And um, they also refer to Mary Baker Eddy as mother, okay, so, and, and prophet as well. They believe that she was a prophet. So I'm going to finish off with the creed of Christian science. Now that we've talked about what they don't believe, here's what they do. God is all in all. God is good. God is mind. God's spirit being all, nothing is matter. 
Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. If God is life and God is all, then non-life, death, does not exist. If it is true, man lives. This fact can never change in science. To the opposite belief, man dies. Life is real and death is the illusion. If God is healthy and God is all, then non-healthy sickness does not exist. Man is never sick, for mind is not sick, and matter cannot be. If God is good and God is all, then non-good, evil, does not exist. And, you know, it sounds like I'm back in geometry class, honestly, where they're trying to, like, you know, do these proofs and show you why this problem is solved the way that they do, except that none of what they said makes any sense at all if you're not coming from their point of view. And so I want to know what you think about all this. Have you come out of a Christian science background? Do you know somebody who is in Christian science? Are you trying to reach out to people who are in Christian science? I would love to hear your story. I would love to help. Any questions you have for me, put them in the comments down below. And like I said, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, like this video, and share it with others. Until next time, may his power be with you.